What's up, y'all? Today, I want to break down how to beat Cassidin, and I want to show you guys a real game example. So, Cassidin and Vladimir and these kind of champions are often champions that we struggle with. So, uh, it, they're one of the most common champions that people come to me and like, hey, I can't figure out how to beat this champion. So, I'm going to show you in a Grandmaster game. This is actually from one of my live streams, twitch.tv slash jsmethod, by the way. You can see this is a Grandmaster game, um, like 350 LP at this point. And I'm into Cassidin, and I normally ban Cassidin because he's really good into like the mages that I play, but I didn't ban Cassidin in this game and I'm into him, and I'm going to show you guys how you can consistently create leads. So there's a couple fundamentals that I'm really going to focus in on here um, that I'm going to illustrate as I play it out. So <laughs> as we get started here, and here I'll leave the sound on so you guys can hear a little bit of what I'm saying as I'm saying it live on stream, but... One of the biggest things is simply setting up the wave so that you can punish him the hardest, right? If the wave is pushing into him, you get him to just, you let him farm as much as he wants. So you want to kind of create a freeze so that you can punish him before he hits level six. And then once you hit level six, he actually starts to beat you in the 1v1. So freezing into him doesn't really work anymore. So what you need to do is actually look to move out throughout the map. Now, as control mages like Victor, this is one of the few matchups where you're looking to shove and roam post six, but it is what you want to do. As a different champion, like I often play Trindamir, you may even look to start, that the pattern is the same. Pre six, we're going to look to set up the freeze as hard as we can. And post six, we're going to look to kind of have a more, more of a map impact than he can. So pre-6, we're going to freeze and try to kill him, deny him as many minions as we can, that kind of thing. And post six, we're going to look to to rotate early. We're going to look to skirmish. We're going to look to fight with our jungler. We're going to look to roam through our side lanes. That kind of thing. So this game is a really good example of me doing that. Here, this is the first wave of the game. I'm mostly focused on the wave. You can see I'm pushing it pretty fast. I'm just hitting him for the first strike here, right? I'm not really hitting him for any other reason. Yeah, you can hear me even saying live. Like, I, my goal is mostly just to hit him with the first strike. My goal is first the wave, second hit him with first strike. Otherwise, I'm not really trying to do too much to him. And here I'm talking about why I hit level 2 early, but it doesn't really matter again. I'm just getting the minions crashing the wave. One of the most important things to the champions like Cassidy is farming well. Because I know he's going to miss some of these under tower, but I got all of my minions. So I'm 12 for 12 out of the minions that have spawned. I know he's going to miss one or two under tower. He's going to miss one or two when he's coming back. You can hear me talking about the freeze. I'm saying we're just going to freeze here. We throw this E out to get ready. What's really important about freezing is on this wave that bounces out. If you try to trade too much or if you hit the wave too much, you'll accidentally push again. So you actually have to be kind of careful on this wave. It's the next wave that's closer to your tower that you have more caster minions built up on the enemy side. That's the one you want to be really aggressive on. So you'll see I'm still playing pretty conservative on this wave. The wave's not where I want it yet. Yeah, I'm even talking about it, you know, we're going to let it come to our side a little bit here. And I'm just letting it come back. If he steps up to, to last hit, I'll try to throw some lasers at him, that kind of thing. I'm going to start pinging assist me, so my jungler notices I have a freeze. And if my jungler notices I have a freeze, hopefully he comes. Sometimes they don't. I even think in this game he didn't really come until it was too, like, awkward. But we are just CSing really well. We are just farming first strike. We're trying to ignore that our bot lane just got double killed. I have big freeze on the Cassidy in pre six. I'm getting annoyed my jungler is not coming to gank for me, but it's like sometimes that's how it goes, man. I'm gonna keep farming him with the first strike. I'm gonna keep last hitting well. <clears throat> And now, every time he steps up to last it, I'm going to auto him lots, right? I'm going to auto him lots, get my mana regen from the D-ring. Um, never letting him get a minion. I'm saying Cassidy, if you're going to step up for a minion. Yeah, you can even hear me talking about how good the minion wave is. But every time Cassidy steps up for a minion, I'm going to say, hey, that's not free. I'm hitting, I'm hitting you. And you're not going to be able to do stuff for free. I let him step up. I was trying to get first strike, but I messed it up there. And now Wukong comes in, and even this kind of gank is significant, because now he's down a lot of minions, right? Even this little drive-by gank. And again, our goal isn't to, to necessarily solo kill in pre-6. I mean, if we can, great. 
but it's to create a big enough lead that we can shove in Rome later without him just running away with the whole game. Yep, and we're talking about, yep, he's losing this XP, and every single minion he's struggling to get up on. Dude, I lost my first strike again, holy. I'm getting tilted at myself for trolling my first strike. But it is what it is, and I'm just chilling. I I ruined my freeze a little bit here. Yeah, I traded, I hit the minions a little bit too much. The closer the freeze gets to your tower, the, the bigger the enemy wave has to be. You can see I actually have enough casters, well this will start to push the other way slowly. But I'm still just playing slow, right? One of the biggest things is not playing too fast against these champions like Cassidy. Oftentimes people play way too quickly. We're denying him a good amount of minions, so. Look at this, he, he cannot step up. We're up about 10 minions here. And being up 10 minions, that's about a kill. 15 CS is about a kill. So we're up almost a kill in terms of gold here. Just taking a uh, 15 CS minion lead. Oh, you can even hear me saying it in the game. <laughs> I'm, I'm even saying like people are not happy enough with, with, with being up. So now he TPs back and he's getting close to six, which means we're about to be losing the 1v1. And that's okay. I had my lost chapter in base. Um, I have good CS. And now you can even hear me saying it in the game again. I want to start rotating around him. So I'm just going to kind of, um, I believe I alt this wave. I, I'm just trying to find a good back. Maybe I feel like I don't need to alt it. Maybe I'm waiting. I am thinking about resetting and and rotating around this guy. Yeah, we actually get lost chapter and a dark soul here, which is pretty good. We get one or two minions back, but yeah, we're up about ten. Yeah, so we're up ten after we TP back, and we're on a really strong spike. We're on our lost chapter. We're on dark seal. We start TPing back to lane here. We're really strong now. And this exact game state, what I said there, I, I actually like that a lot. What I said, said we're not up too much. Hey, listen, listen, listen. It's like we're not up too much, but it's like we're up a good amount. You know what I mean? And that's really important. Being okay with being up a good amount. It's, it's not too much, but you can use this now. We are much, much, much stronger than Cassidy right now in terms of map pressure. Cassidy may be able to solo kill us. But we can rotate around him. So here right now, what I'm noticing is my back is re or my bottom is recalling. They're going back, and my Wukong is clearing up. So I'm thinking about maintaining Pryo and moving up with my Wukong here. That's what I'm thinking about. And you can see I'm not even trying to punish him anymore because I know I can't punish him. I'm just keeping my CS high, looking for the map opportunity. And you can see I F key towards my jungle. I start walking towards top lane here. I'm going to set up my vision here, or at least laser and make sure that I'm not getting ganked. Oh, I actually talk about in the game here, this ward was a mistake because we're playing top side. And I didn't... Yeah, I'm actually, I'm actually talking about how that was a mistake. So I made a bit of a mistake with placing this ward, oops, sorry, with, with this ward down here. But the ideas are still the same. I'm maintaining priority. I'm not trying to overplay on the Cassidyn, and I'm looking towards my team. <clears throat> I want to move to Wukong. Now I see Wukong invading, so I'm thinking, okay, how can we impact that? So I'm walking to him. Zach gets away. I get actually kind of upset here. I end up missing my laser, and I'm, I'm pretty tilted at myself. And a Wukong dies. I'm, a, I'm annoyed about that. But sometimes your teammates just die. And now, what tends to happen here is people get tilted. And they're like, oh man, my teammates are insane. And it's against Cassidy, so that shouldn't happen. Um, But, oh, and now, now our Urgot's about to die. But we're still stronger than the Cassidy. We're almost 10 CS per minute, right? We are still in a good spot. Twitch is getting some kills. Okay, now this is a mistake. I actually overstay. I had to go back, and this is what I mean by Cassidy is actually stronger than us in the 1v1. Okay, because we're even health here. I'm actually up a little bit of health. Um, but he's able to flash on me. He's able to kill me here. So this is an overstay. This is what you really want to avoid. This is the biggest mistake I make for this entire game. I just overstay. 
since my jungle died, since my top died, I have to reset with them. It's super off tempo to stay for this wave. Now, it's better to lose a little bit of this wave and catch the back half of it on my tower than it is to die here. However, I die and it sucks. It is what it is. But the beautiful part is that we are still stronger than him in terms of map pressure. So he can beat us in a 1v1, but I'm thinking, okay, I see both the junglers top. Let's go bottom. Um, I decide to not commit to it because they see me and I come right back. That's what it's all about. Taking this kind of look, looking bottom and then coming back. Now, if they didn't see me, they just die there. And we're going to keep taking that look. That's how we're going to win this game. Even though our teammates are losing, even though our jungler is losing, even though our bot lane is losing, I can carry this game through good CS and good early plays. Our bot lane gets a play. I ping that our Cassidy is leaving. Nice. My side laner is getting big shutdowns. Our bot lane big stuff, big stuff. is coming back into the game. And Cassidy's here, and it's tough to play against the Cassidy, but it is what it is. We end up resetting to buy our Mythic right before the Dragon. And I know that since Dragon is coming up and I'm on my Mythic, Cassidy cannot match me. If I go to this fight, I know we are much, much stronger. So that's all I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get this Dragon fight to happen. I'm trying to say, hey, let's go here. Hey, come help. I'm hovering towards it. I'm pinging on my way. I'm like, we're going to force this because we're going to either beat up this Dragon or they're going to try to fight us. And I know I beat Cassidy in this fight and they cannot fight us. So Kassadin's off the map, they end up just giving this dragon, but fortunately, I guess maybe unfortunately, they end up stealing the dragon, but I know I can take this fight. So I'm going to keep doing everything I can to keep the fight going. I'm even flashing aggressively. I'm looking for the interaction because I know Kassadin cannot match me on this interaction. It's not too bad. So that's one of the biggest takeaways is... High interaction games, Cassidy can't keep up with. So we're trying to keep, we're trying to increase the pace of the game so that Cassidy can't keep up with us. So here, now we're just back to even. I'm talking about, yeah, it's, it's kind of annoying because Cassidy definitely is going to be a problem. And here we do get a pretty good gank. Cassidy makes the same mistake I do of just overstaying. Good job. And we punish him. And now we get to keep picking up the pace of the game. We're going to take this whole tower. We're going to reset here. Cassidy went bottom out of base. And I'm just thinking, okay, since my jungler is playing top, I'm just going to push with him. And then we're going to play on this top side of the map. I come up. I actually end up taking this jungle camp. And now as they come to try to fight on their jungle camp, I'm just going to kite away. And I know that Cassidy again, can't really help this interaction. He's going to try, but he's so darn weak right now. He needs another item. He needs a couple more minutes to scale. We're at 15 minutes into this game. He's not strong yet. So now we kind of have to back off this fight because their bot lane is here and our ADC is still bottom. That's completely okay. We won this jungle quadrant, right? They keep losing interaction because Cassidy can't keep up. I am forcing map plays. I forced this dragon fight and then we won the fight. And then I'm forcing this jungle quadrant and we won the quadrant. Now, since we won this quadrant, we're able to force this Herald and they can't really contest it, right? All these plays are consequences of Cassidy's identity. He cannot help. He cannot keep up with the pace of the game. This is what you have to do against Cassidy. Pre-6, you try to create a CS advantage. You try to maybe even create a solo kill on him if he can. But once he hits level 6, it's just a matter of speeding up the pace in which map plays are happening. And here, Cassidy is up a good amount. Or, or he, he has some kills because he took good roams. It's like, I can't control that, but I can keep forcing interaction. Again, this is another good fight that Cassidy can't compete in right now. And we know Dragon's coming up, so we're thinking, okay, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep going. If they had a normal mid laner, this would be an overstay. But Cassidy is forced to go top. And if Cassidy goes top, well, then we just get to force the Dragon play. And I come up here. for trying to make this play on me. They just have to give the dragon. They try to contest me top. I have to be careful. I just give this. We win dragon. We win bot lane. We win mid lane. We are just permanently winning the map because Cassidy cannot keep up. And this is what the whole game is about. And then I end up taking a good CP bottom because again, they can't take this fight. And then we win this fight. Actually, I think Cassidy TP'd here as well. Yeah, me and Cassidy both TP'd. But again, Cassidy cannot take that fight. So it's like, 
And now they're just out of the game. The game is just over. They tried to make another play on me top. They might still be in it. Yeah, and the game is just over at this point. And we end up just completely, we keep doing the same thing. We keep playing, applying lots of pressure. So the biggest takeaway that I want you guys to really focus on is even at level six, Cassidy may beat you in lane, especially depending on the matchup, but you need to pick up the pace of the game. And Victor doesn't like to play very fast. There are champions like Zoe and Annie, and there are all these other champions that actually like to play fast. All you have to do is find opportunities to get out of lane and force map plays, force invades, force roams, force shoves, that kind of thing. I hope this video helped you guys understand Cassidy a little bit better how to play game states in which he can't really handle and how to handle eat, like your teammates dying early and your Wukong and, and whatever, not really helping you and still being able to carry. You gotta stay focused and you gotta not kind of overplay. Keep your CS high, keep your pressure high and keep just pressing, Kassadin will crack under that. As long as you don't overplay, that's the way to beat Kassadin. All right, let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below. If you guys made it to the end of this video, go ahead and comment 17 minutes and I'll go give you guys a little bit of a heart. Let me know if there are any other matchups you want to see, any other video guides you want to see, or any other um, advice in general for the YouTube channel. I love hearing from you guys and I really, really do appreciate the feedback. I hope y'all have a blessed night. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.